Good morning, YouTube. Haggerty is a big force in the automotive world now. Of course, they started as an insurance company, and now they've branched out to be everywhere, making media, buying up whole concourses like the Amelia Island Concours, uh, and they are just everywhere. Right, of course. I'm a big fan of them for many reasons, but <laughs> one of them is their Haggerty bull market list that comes out every single oh, year. And why are you a fan of that? Well, because they <laughs> usually listed a car or two that I own, oh, yeah. and uh, they immediately pump up the values by putting them on this list. It's kind of a big deal. Do you call them ahead year. of time and you're like, what should I buy next year? What's going to go on the bull list? No, I don't know. There might be a Whovie fan in there. I don't know. Yeah. I have no influence. I have no say in this at all. Right. But uh, last year, two of the cars on the list were the SLR McLaren. Of course. Which I had bought very recently. Shortly yes. after buying it, it was on their list. And then the Murcielago. Right, which you don't have anymore. No, you made me sell that car. I did not make it. You I, made me sell that car. Yeah. I had a 2006 Murcielago Roadster. It was a beautiful thing, but it was orange and crazy looking, and she said if I wouldn't want to be seen in that car. I love that car. It's a beautiful car. You're a serious car guy. Of course you're going to have Murcielago, but it's like a little flashy and bright, and like I get it, and it's cool. You said you would not want to be seen in it. Like If I came to pick you up at the airport, you would not get in. Of course I would get so in. Of course I, I would have just to sell like it. put a paper bag over my head. I'm just so I had to sell it. It was an amazing car, but because it had come out on this list, it had gone up in value. Same thing with the SLR McLaren. I bought it and it did pop up a little bit. Right. I don't know if it's sort of a permanent thing, but there's definitely a boost right after this because Haggerty has, I think, millions of members. Right. And so this newsletter gets sent out to all of them. They all see this and say, hmm, I think I want an SLR McLaren now. They go searching for one to buy it. At least for temporarily, there is a okay. bump. The penis car, right? The SLR is McLaren. Is that what you know The SLR as? McLaren, yes. The SLR <laughs> McLaren. It is the hood. It kind of looks a little bit That's what she thinks. Rounded. I mean, I guess I've said that too, where the nose looks kind of phallic, but it's supposed to look like the Formula One race cars. Right. It just happens to look like a giant Manhood extension, yes. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I prefer that, actually. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great design. Oh, okay. Well, great. <laughs> so what do you think of those cars? Well, I feel like there was sort of predictions that the value of those were going to shoot up like crazy, and they haven't quite gotten there yet. Yeah, because it's the only Halo car of that era that's still selling for under its MSRP. Mm -hmm. So like a, a Ferrari Enzo is multi-multi-million dollars. Right. A Carrera GT went from, you know, six... $800,000 to over a million dollars in the last few years. The SLR hadn't moved yet, and it's right. actually selling for less than what they sold for new, which mm -hmm. is a weird thing because it was on the same posters and magazine covers and just as worshipped back then as those cars. But that was a 2023 car. The 2024 list. Mm -hmm. What is at the top of this well, list? Well, the very top is the 89 Lamborghini oh. Countach 25th anniversary. That's a beautiful car. That's yeah. amazing. I have one. I can't believe you have one because they didn't make a lot of them. Well, they made a little less than 2,000. But of the but 25th most anniversary? Of them, most of them are 25th anniversary yeah. cars. I think 700 or so. Okay. And uh, last few years of production, they made these. And the big ones making headlines recently are the Wolf of Wall Street cars. Right. Both of them were offered for sale. The wrecked one, of course, they had to wreck a real Countach to make it realistic. They tried to do it with a replica, and the director of Scorsese, he didn't like it. He's huh. like, we have to destroy a real one, which is... Amazing. Oh, why don't want... No, it's terrible. <laughs> Amazing. You know, that iconic scene with DiCaprio kind of climbing on Quaaludes to try and get that home. That was a real one? That was a real You're one. You're kidding. So they had the one that they didn't destroy and the one that they, they beat the heck out right. of. Right. And so the one that was all beat up was in Dubai, I think. It sold for a little over a million. Uh, not okay. sold, though. Didn't meet reserve. Okay, got So it, it didn't sell. But right. over a million bucks for a totaled out Countach. Yeah. And then this actually screen used one that wasn't destroyed was offered for sale just recently in New York. Mm -hmm. Perfect place to sell it because all the Wall Street guys were there. $1.6 million. Not wow. only was it the first uh, 25th car to sell for over a million bucks, but it went way, way over, right. obviously, because of the screen significance. What do you think the wrecked one is actually worth? Like, do you think that okay. reserve at a million is correct? Well, it didn't meet reserve, I think, at 1.2 million. Yeah, here looking it up on Rob Report, it looks like it was 1.5 million was what, what? the owner wanted. Okay. And it didn't get bid up quite to that. No. But look, it's absolutely ruined. It looks so cool. Just, just like the movie. <laughs> Nobody did anything to it, tried to fix it or anything. It's just been static display. That is great. Now, you would never sell yours, I'm guessing, right? Well, I mean, if it gets up to that price and then can get me into one of those, uh, I'd probably switch. But... I own mine for free. That's the craziest thing about it is because I bought it with a Lamborghini Diablo. Right. And I sold the Diablo for what I paid for both. 
You're kidding. So I own this car for nothing. Okay, so it's, would you just kind of let anyone drive it then? No, no, or no, 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 no. Or just sitting pretty like it's a no, super duper trailer I'm scared queen. to drive it now. <laughs> yeah. I get it out and it, not only because of the value, but also because it's pearl white. Yes. Not white like the Wolf Wall Street car, right. which means if I get a scratch on it, there's no match in this pearl. I, no way. Yeah. It's repainting the whole car, so that's definitely a Would scary you ever thing. let like one of your car guy friends drive it? Like if they were like, please Tyler, I let me just take it around the block. You would is, just say no. That is a car you I You say have not Ed, let. I don't think so. Maybe Ed, but <laughs> definitely someone who I know would write a check when they crashed it. Okay. <laughs> and that would be Ed? Well, maybe not. It's I don't all know. original paint. Yeah. I'm just very protective of that one because it's like half of my net worth at this point. Right. <laughs> that car, that one car. So uh, yeah, it sucks because I really wanted one, had the poster growing up, really enjoyed it, but now it's like an asset and I'm kind of scared. But sure. also when I drive it, I have so much fun driving it. So it's it's one of those weird combinations, yeah. I suppose. On every single bull market trending article, they do the highs and lows of each car and then the values according to Haggerty. So on the Countach, it's the V12, obviously, right. 7,000 RPM, the crazy doors. And it's such a poster car that everybody goes nuts when they see it. The Lowe's, it's a workout to drive. I completely agree with that. Right. Uh, has put lots of children of mechanics through college. <laughs> yeah, it is expensive to maintain, but mine's actually been very nice to me. And uh, yeah, you are inundated with strangers every time you stop. So they put that as a high and a low. Like right. you can never go out in this car. And if you don't want attention, you're going to get attention no matter what, if you like it or not. And it's not just people that you want to talk to. Like when I drive some weird obscure car where people that know come up and talk to you. And right. it's people you want to talk to. With a Countach, it's, it's a Lambo. <laughs> it, it, it's everybody. So you could pick up anyone in this car. Exactly. <laughs> As for the values, they list them one to four condition, which right. you're familiar with that. Yeah. Where one is like perfect mm -hmm. and four is a total basket like case. Concord, needing restoration. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Number one, 770,000. Mm -hmm. Number two, 612,000. Number three, a good driving car, but you mm -hmm. know, worn out, 435,000. Number four, project car, 345,000. Wow. Still what? a lot of money. What? Yeah. Now, number two on the list mm -hmm. really surprised me. And I had just bought this car. Not even two weeks before this list came out. Another one of your cars is you on ready? this list. Number two is no the way. 46 to 50, which I, I don't know why I put 50. Uh, 46 to 50 Chrysler Town and Country. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> he just the bought King this car. The King Moody's. It's a beautiful car. Yes. Absolutely stunning. So these cars are pretty special. Yeah. Wood is used in the actual body of this car, in the actual structure itself. It's not like these are tacked on panels on the outside. Mm -hmm. The frame of the door, the whole trunk is wood. And it's amazingly beautiful. They were way past this in car engineering by now, not using wood anymore. Mm -hmm. But they just decided to because it looked cool. And uh, it was one of the coolest post-war cars ever, Oh, I think. it's absolutely stunning. Yeah, it is but so great. 46 to 48 is the all wood cars. And then 49 to 50, it's the half, you know, it's still just tacked on fake. Right. And I don't get why they put 46 to 50 on all that, but it's still right. an old school straight eight, which is a really nice smooth engine. Mm -hmm. But then they introduced fluid drive, which is sort of a semi-automatic transmission that can mean it can go 80 miles an hour mm -hmm. and really anybody can drive it. And it is sort of art deco, but sort of post-war, I mean, just the best of everything. Right. And I bought it because I thought prices were crashing on them. People were dying out because 10, 15 years ago, this was a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollar car that I yeah. bought for fifty eight grand. Yeah. So this is supposed to be a bull market, like trending up car, and I see it as a trending down car. So I kind of disagree with it being on the list. It's really cool that it's on the list because I just bought it, but right. I don't know if it's a good idea for a, a bull market car. Right. Well, I mean, it seems like that the generation that would really be obsessed with them is sort of leaving us. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. fair to say, but. They're a gorgeous car. There's no way you can get around it being an absolutely stunning car, no matter what age, what generation you are. This mm -hmm. is a beautiful car. So I see why it's on the list. It should be on the list. So the highs and lows of the town and country, yeah. highs, everybody loves a Woody. Oh my God, yes. they actually said that. Yes. <laughs> a piece of art deco furniture you can drive, Aww. America's favorite parade car, yeah. or fun for six, because it is two benches, uh, just for a night at the drive-in. It's massive. We're going to take it to the drive-in. We have to take it to the drive-in. Oh, yeah. That's the ultimate drive-in car. The Lowe's, it was built before Eisenhower's Interstates and geared like it, hmm. which, yes, but it's still way better than a pre-war car. Yeah. It only has three speeds, and you need a Duesenberg or a Packard to really get up to speed in those. And all those pre-war cars, they're unsynchronized gearboxes, so it's... 
right. the shifting is a real pain. But I, I, I do get it. It's not going to go 100 miles an hour. But compared to like my old 51 Ford Country Squire, sure, which yeah. was a woody uh, flathead Ford V8, that's a three on the tree. And good luck going 60, 65. The motor's just screaming. This one, right. totally fine at that speed. Oh, the wood is difficult to restore and maintain. Hmm, really? We'll keep it in a climate-controlled garage, obviously. Huh, yeah, I guess so. That's, that's I like the, way the wood to keep on it nice. yours. It's gorgeous, and I don't think you should refinish it. No, absolutely not. And restorations are financial sinkholes. Yeah, I've heard like $150,000, $250,000 restorations because it's like restoring a vintage yacht and a car at right. the same time. Right, right. Combined. <laughs> True. So really bad. Thankfully, mine's very nice cosmetically, so I don't have to worry about but that. But don't you think it's easier, though, to restore wood on a vehicle other than anything um, else? Like, metalwork is really labor-intensive. There's going to be some carpenters out there that are going to strongly disagree. Yeah. And the bend of that trunk to get that wood to do that. It's gorgeous. To form it. Same with, like, building a mahogany boat. Yeah. It's, the labor's unreal. You see the joints on it? Yeah, the joints on these cars. It, it's, yeah. You look at the detailing, and also there is some metal. There's a metal skin over that mahogany inlay on mm -hmm. like the door panels and things where they put it over the rear part of the body. Like getting all that to get on, I, I right. can't imagine. Well, the teeth you're saying where the wood meet, like yeah. where you don't need nails and screws. People don't make furniture or I, anything like that I'm anymore. I'm surprised there's anybody left alive that can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> so values. Number one, $144,000. Whoa. Number two, $81,400. Mm -hmm. Number three, $52,500. I'd say mine's between probably a two okay. and a three. Yeah. I'd say probably maybe a two and a half. Um, and number four, $28,400 because a restoration project would exceed right. the value of the car. Yeah. So its value is in parts. It, right. Yeah. You'd be crazy to buy one to think you could restore it. Number three on the list is a 2008 to 2013 BMW M3. Really? Yeah. How now did these, they get on there? I know you're not a fan of the German imports <laughs> as much, but I know They're Jake, cool. the producer, just got very, very excited. So <laughs> why is it so special, Jake? Hi, Rev V8. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yep. That is sweet. Four liter V8 in these. 8,400 RPM. Right. So Jake's daily driver is a E92 BMW oh, 3 yeah. Series. This is the king daddy of oh, that. Oh, baby. They are gorgeous. So the value, you're thinking, is just going to be generally shooting up from now on. Yeah, on because you can still get it with a manual transmission. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the last of the old school V8s, you know, kind of a German muscle car. Right. And it is really good looking. BMWs recently have gotten mm -hmm. really ugly. So... Uh, yeah, I definitely get this one for sure. The E46 M3, a previous generation, or was it two previous generations, Jake? One generation. One generation. E46 is the previous generation. It's already had its heyday. Yeah. They are crazy prices right, right now, considering, I mean, what you get, a 150,000 mile car could be 30 grand now. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. But uh, this one, apparently, they're saying is on the way up. And uh, prices for number one, 65,800, and number two, 51,600, and number three, Forty thousand six hundred and a number four, a hoop D, twenty-nine thousand two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Interesting. All yeah. right. Still have to watch out for those rod bearings, I think, right? Yes, very, very much so. <laughs> it's a it's a thing. BMWs, they always have their fatal flaw that grenades them all and <laughs> that one, yeah, they make copper in the rod bearings okay. that it just kinda wears out and Poof, you popped a motor. It sounds like you shouldn't yeah. do it that way anymore. Yeah. And still the cooling systems. Love them, hate them. Yeah. For me. All right. That's nice. Next is the 97 to 99 Mitsubishi Pajero so Evolution. So interesting because you don't cool? see a lot of these on the road. No, ever. They, they were never sold in the U.S. Okay. So they're all so being be imported. <laughs> in uh, you know the 25 year rule they're old enough now mm -hmm. and they're a tribute to like the Dakar rally cars mm -hmm. and so they made them a wide body they gave them sort of a wing they just look really neat and i've never personally experienced one but i would love to own one oh yeah, yeah. what are what are the values on these ones okay well number 1 is 70,000 number 2 50,000 number 3 35,000 number 4 17,900 which there may have been four that have sold in the U.S. in the last year. So, that, I mean, they're, I feel like that you're just spitballing. Right. They don't sell very often, so that's, a. I yeah. feel like, a wild guess. Yeah. I'm trying to recall if I've ever seen one. I'm yeah. sure I have at a concourse, something yeah. like that. But, yeah, they are super rare in the U.S. Right. So, next on the list is another car <laughs> I recently sold. So, I guess I sold it too soon because I got a little bump from uh, Haggerty. The 2011-2016 Ferrari FF. 
It's interesting because they don't look like any other Ferrari on the road. Uh, they were very controversial when they came out because it is a hatchback right. Ferrari, a shooting brake. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think makes them special because they look different. They're unique. They're more exotic. Yeah, but if you wanted a V12 four-seat Ferrari, you had a very elegant styled coupe before. Right. So you had the 612, you have mm -hmm. the 456, which I owned. Um, you had a beautiful, elegant, not hatchback Ferrari. Right. And this one, well, I think it's cool. I think it's pretty. But a lot of people were kind of upset about it. Right. Um, plenty of power with the V12, but uh, yeah, it was a weird all-wheel drive system where only 15% of the power goes to the front wheels, though. Huh, yeah. And it's, and it's very complicated and very brakey, unfortunately, because you have two transmissions. In the front, it's like a two-speed, that'll blow up, and the back is a normal dual-clutch, that'll blow up. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think a really cool car. And uh, I bought mine for, I think, a little over $100,000. Yeah. And it didn't have any story. It didn't have that high mileage. I think 30,000 miles. Right. Yeah, it's a cool car. Yeah, and there's room in the back for limited activities. I don't know about that, but um, I could haul my children in it. That's why I was attracted <laughs> to it. I don't know about fitting in it for activities, though. That'd be... I think it's possible, I suppose. Sorry. Okay, back on task here. Uh, prices. Number one, 177,000. Number two, 143. Number three, 125. Number four, 106,400 for a project. I mean, wow. The blown motor, I don't know. I think that can be much, much lower as a project yeah. with a dirty history. Because mine was solidly a number two car, but yeah. I bought it for four money. I mean, maybe since you've sold it, the value has slowly been going up. I just sold it. I think that's high, but. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Right. I try and get bargains. So next on the list, 2000 to 2005 Jaguar mm. XKR. Now you love Jaguars. Arr. What do you think about this particular I've one being one. on the list? Of I course you've one. had one. They're great. Yes. They are underappreciated. I agree with this very much. So you get a supercharged V8. Yes. It has an amazing noise, an amazing snarl, beautifully designed car. So Jaguar had a design totally ripped away from them and went to Aston Martin. That's what started the DB7 and right. all that styling generation for uh, decades. So they were actually delayed and had to continue the XJS for way longer than they wanted to. A car that was designed in the 70s was still around, right. getting close to Y2K. Right. And so this was the replacement, mm. uh, the XK8, eventually the XKR, and it was like going from the horse and buggy to a modern performance right. car. Right. Yeah, and it's very pretty, and they are very cheap. The only thing is they don't sell them in manual transmissions. <gasps> They're all automatics. R they've never? No? They don't, don't dabble there? I think people will swap them, Jake, yeah. right? But there's no yeah. manual factory yeah. XKRs. Okay. So that's the only downfall of these, I think. The maintenance we used to think was bad, yeah. but now compared to modern cars, it's not. Timing chain things to watch out for. Right. Uh, coolant lines underneath the supercharger like to go, but child's play compared to the crap we have to deal with now. So. Highs and lows, silky smooth supercharged V8. Mm. Yes, sensuous good looks. Ooh. Ooh, particularly rare as a coupe. <laughs> I had the coupe. <laughs> Cheap as a used Camry. Lows, cramped cabin. Yeah, not a very good backseat. Backseats for groceries only. Yeah, beat them to it. Uh, many were used hard, <laughs> and maintenance records are essential. No manual gearbox. I just sent all that. Yeah. So, <laughs> price range. Number one. Did I write this article? <laughs> Probably. $38,900. Number right. two, $26,700. Number three, $16,100. Number four, $8,300. Right. Yeah. I didn't read through the article before. I just like scrolled through the list. So I, I'm being cocky, but. <laughs> it's okay. But like, here's what I wasn't sure about. You say Jaguar. Are there three syllables when I, so you say I, that? Or is that a Kansas thing? I grew up watching Top Gear. Right. And listening to those presenters. So sometimes I pronounce things not very Kansas and at least Jaguar, right. the British audience, I get it right. That's how they it pronounce it. It sounds a lot better. And Jaguar. Cool, yeah, I would say Jaguar. Or they call it the Jag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've, I've left my wallet in the Jag. <laughs> well, it's like it Porsche an old meme. and Porsche. You know, obviously it's Porsche, Porsche but Americans, yes. we say Americans, where's that from? You know, we say it Porsche, which no, we're we not supposed to. No, well, it's a Porsche, but that, I think that's a whole thing with, uh, that was a whole Friends episode with LeBlanc. Was I think, it? Right. Yeah. All right, yes. Yeah. All right, so the next one on the list, 1965 to 70 Chevrolet Impala really? SS. This is on the... And I have a little bit of a blind Whoa. spot for you know, the big full-size muscle cars like this. So I'm kind of curious what they think. I've never experienced one before. She's a beauty. Oh, yeah. I know this is more in your wheelhouse, but uh, 
Yeah, a lot of different engines offered in these. I know they went from like the 348, yeah, they see it on here, to mm -hmm. yeah, the 427. Of course, they had the big block along with the Camaros. Beautiful. But I'm curious what the highs oh, and lows look at the are. Back end on that. That's gorgeous. They say the highs, perhaps the most American of American cars. Yes. Parts of plenty, cruise night or the drags, yeah. it does both. Lowe's needs a big garage. <laughs> it does. Speaking British. 60s fuel appetite. Like straights more than curves. Yeah, right. they don't handle very well. They're big old boats. A lot of them have drum brakes. Yeah. I don't even think you could yeah. park it in a regular garage because they're so wide. But they are cheap. Look at this for a number one, a perfect car, $44,500. Beautiful. That's in a perfect American car right yeah, there. Yeah, but compared to a Chevelle or a Camaro, yeah. that is a big bargain for sure. Number two, thirty thousand one hundred dollars. That's gorgeous. Number three, <laughs> twenty-two thousand two hundred dollars. Number four, fourteen thousand six hundred dollars for a project. Would you be able to parallel park this on oh, the first sure. on the first try? Sure. First try. No problem. <laughs> I had a big Buke Roadmaster. That was my thing. Next on the list, eighty-one to eighty-six Jeep CJ8 Scrambler. These are fun. They these, are really cool. These are great, and I love that it's on the list, and the values are going up on these. Yeah, they kind of brought back a Jeep pickup truck recently with a Gladiator. You have to see April's reaction. She doesn't like it. It looks I weird. I had for a little while. I thought it was cool. It just looks like a Lego thing where they're like, oh, let's just try this and see if it works. And it doesn't. They're going to push it out anyway. But the Gladiator's kind of like the old Scrambler's the best of both. You get all the Jeep stuff. You get a convertible. They did okay. a good job, I okay. think, making a tribute I'd to this. I'd rather go for one of these than Gladiator any day. Until you had to get on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the engine options. An 82 horsepower, 2.5 liter Iron Duke. Ooh, fancy. There you go. Or the 4.2 liter inline six was an option. A really cool looking truck. Look how sweet that is. Mm -hmm. All right, what are the prices on these? Well, so they say the highs and lows are the mm -hmm. irresistible Tonka toy looks, utility mm -hmm. with invincibility. Rare and collectible 4x4s are hot. They are hot. Lows, anemic base engines, not mm -hmm. waterproof, no. <laughs> Creaky body structure. Yeah, very crude. Yeah. Very, very crude. But well, that's, that's the point of them. That's what they're about. Exactly. So, number one, $52,600. Okay. Number two, $41,400. Number three, $31,700. Number four, $16,100. Which you compare that to a K5 Blazer right. or a Bronco of the first generation. Yeah. A bargain. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolute bargain because those are all six figure cars when they're right. done up properly. At least what we see at Barrett Jackson. Next on the list, 1964 to 66 Ford Thunderbird. Whoa. I can't believe they put these on there. Because they're beautiful cars. When you see them in person, they, these are like serious land yachts. Yeah, well, they look like spaceships. They That's do. the thing. The tail lights, the whole structure of it, it yeah. looks like something, you know, in the 60s, yeah. the jet age and all that stuff. Just a perfect example of that style of car. And I didn't think that they were very expensive. So they got the 390 mm -hmm. Ford, which is a good engine. Yeah, look at that cover for the top. It just it looks like an astronaut needs to be in, in there going to their rocket. It's gorgeous. And it's sort of like a cockpit in there where like everything's like driver centric wrapping around you. Mm -hmm. It's really, really pretty. Yeah, the early Ford Thunderbirds, the baby birds, mm -hmm. I've driven one of those and it's okay. I mean They're it's They're beautiful. It's the like design a, is gorgeous. Yeah, but the driving experience it's it's kind of, it doesn't feel good. Like no? the 62 Corvette in there right. is a fun car to drive. Okay. Those are kind of just lumbery cruisers, but they're not comfortable. It's very cramped like the 62 Corvette. Yeah. Whereas these, I haven't really driven them, but I know it's a lot more roomy inside. Oh, for sure. And uh, a lot more of a luxury car. Yeah. Where the first Thunderbird, even though it doesn't drive like a sports car, right. it's not comfortable like a luxury car. Right. So I think they did a lot better with these. I feel these. like with car makers, this was the most advanced, biggest jump from one generation to the next when they came out with these huge, massive Thunderbirds. Yeah. So, hi, as they're saying, style for days in a number of configurations. Uh, coupe, convertible, sports roadster, town sedan, and Landau mm -hmm. top. Ooh. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, I want some Landau tops. A comfortable ride. Disc brakes, Lowe's wallowing, softly sprung suspension. Mm. It's a luxury car. Mm, yeah. Not a lot of get up and go from a standing start. Right. It's a luxury car. Right. That's the thing about auto journalists nowadays. They're always complaining, and that's why all of our cars have to be sporty. Even crossovers and SUVs, they all have to handle tight and you know go well on a track when they should just be comfortable cruisy cars if they're supposed to be cruisy cars. Right. But now, their price range is on here is interesting because I would have gone a little higher. You think so? Number one, $56,400 yeah. for mm -hmm. the nicest ones in the world. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah. yeah. Number two, $41,300. Number three, 27400 Number four, 17300 mm -hmm. Obviously, nowhere to go but up, I guess, right. huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <gasps> the last one. Get out of here. <laughs> Get your face out of here. The last I'm one. done. <laughs>
This is the part of the reason why I wanted to do this. Stop I scrolled it. through the list and I thought, do we cover this? Because it's going to be a little bit too much of patting myself on the back. But then the last one, I had to see April's reaction Did to this. Did you like doctor this? No. Or you, this, this is, is like the actual. This is genuinely their last choice. Can it's I? one of April's most hated cars ever. The 97 to 2002 Plymouth Prowler. Why is this on the list? Why? The only thing I could think of is like the Superbird where it was like super unwanted when it was first came out and so they didn't make a lot of them and now they're valuable because they didn't make a lot of them. So homologation race special is Superbird and yeah. lower production numbers than the Prowler for sure. But the Prowler, well, mm -mm. Chip Foose There's, designed it, I think, in school. Well, I think and he's then, inspired it, the design of it. Yeah, but the story goes in the Prowlers. They needed a car to experiment with bonded aluminum. Okay. And they couldn't do a big production car. Mm -hmm. So they were like, how do we do this in a small scale, enough to actually make sense, to maybe make some money, but just to see if we can Can't do this. look at it. And so the Prowler came out. But people hated it because they chose their most powerful engine at the time, uh, the 3.5 liter V6, I believe. Why would they do that? From like the big Chryslers. Yeah. And uh, no manual no. transmission. No. They called it the auto stick. No. And <laughs> no, just everything, no. The body, well, it's supposed to throw back to an old hot rod. Which is cool, I get it, but it's just really slow. And the optional trailer oh, accessory. Oh my, you just made it worse. They really have those? Yeah, they come with a trailer. You've seen it before. Ew. You just blocked it out. This is grossing sit me down, out. I can't handle this. They're great cars. They're like giving me the chills. Like They're it's creeping great me cars. out. What, you've driven one? I've owned one. A purple one just like this. Stop it. It's like yes. grimace purple. <laughs> yes. And it was fun. Yeah, I had it tuned. Mm -hmm. I had the gear ratios changed. Mm -hmm. And then the shifts on the auto stick tightened up. Yeah. And it was properly quick. It was fun. Uh, the dash rattled from the factory, kind of just shook. It was very <laughs> 90s Chrysler quality in that sense, but it did look very cool. I think I paid 16 grand for it. I had nothing <laughs> into it, but it was it's a wild and crazy looking car. You like this car? I like this car. Seri you're seriously telling me? I like this car. You like this car? I like it. I didn't know that. I like it a lot. I, didn't, I don't know if this is gonna work out in the long run because we disagree on our core values. Seriously? Is, I, I'm really worried about your decision-making choices. I knew choices. you hated the SSR. Yeah. I had one of those two. I agree. Hate's a strong word. This I hate. <laughs> so this is your most hated car ever? Yes. Yes. I knew you didn't like it. I knew you hated it, but I didn't know that it was this strong of a... It's just wrong, like, and it's slow, and it shouldn't have been made, and there's not a lot of them. And if I ever see one, I'll probably light it on fire. So I'm suddenly unattractive to April. No, that'll of my that'll family. never happen. I'm just worried about your decision making abilities or disabilities, perhaps. Okay. Unability. Well, let's see what they have to say because they are very cheap. Okay. And I guess that may be one reason why they think that there's nowhere for it to go but up. But uh, the highs, they call it sophisticated structural engineering. Like I said, bonded aluminum chassis. Okay. Something you would normally only see right. in supercars. Right. Or they're all carbon fiber now, but it was a big deal. <laughs> Still highly affordable. The optional trailer is bizarrely cool. <laughs> did not say that. Yeah. You did not. You wrote this. No. It's now not. I know for sure because nobody else would say that <laughs> in the entire world except <laughs> they, for you. They just mirror what I said. Lowe's, no V8, no right. manual. Right. Interior's a little pedestrian. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Not especially rare because they built 11,702 of them from 1997 to 2002. That's if you see one, burn it. <laughs> or buy one. Price range number one, $45,500. Number two, $34,800. Number three, $29,200. Number four, $15,700. And I paid, I think, 16 grand for mine. And it was a it was a two and a half, I'd say, right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So, huh? hmm. how about that? If you ever got another one, I, I don't know what I would do. I'd have to hide it from her. <laughs> yeah. It'd be our first secret. <laughs> My secret car, the Prowler. Thank you so much for watching. I had no idea. It was that deep it's of a hatred. A, I just, I'm worried about you and your decisions in life, your life decisions. Like, I've been okay with everything until now. <laughs> I know you do a lot of questionable things, but this perhaps tops the list. You're awful. Hmm. Awful. Maybe. You might have just crashed the values of Prowlers just right there. <laughs> Stop it. It's one thing Haggerty says this, but then if... 
<laughs> April Rose says it's the most hated car ever, and you are a complete loser if you buy one. We might see a counteracting force here. <laughs> Stop it. There's going to be some angry powder, dude. So sorry. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right. I'm a solid idiot. I'm a solidly a two. Bad boys wait a little too long there. <laughs> wait a little go in bad lower and be a man. I'm a man. Uh, I'm a man. That's better. Yeah, hundred and I bought mine. <laughs> All right. My hatchback Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> mm.